Food is our fuel, and its nutrients give our body's cells the energy and substances they need to work. But before food can do that, it must be digested into small pieces the body can absorb and use. The digestive system is made up of the alimentary canal, also called the digestive tract, and other organs, such as the liver and pancreas. The alimentary canal is the long tube of organs, including the esophagus, stomach, and intestines, that runs from the mouth to the anus. An adult's digestive tract is about 30 feet long. Digestion begins in the mouth, well before food reaches the stomach. When we see, smell, taste, or even imagine a tasty meal, our salivary glands in front of the ear, under the tongue, and near the lower jaw begin making saliva. As the teeth tear and chop the food, saliva moistens it for easy swallowing. A digestive enzyme in saliva called amylase starts to break down some of the carbohydrates in the food even before it leaves the mouth. Swallowing, done by muscle movements in the tongue and mouth, moves the food into the throat, or pharynx. The pharynx is a passageway for food and air. A soft flap of tissue called the epiglottis closes over the windpipe when we swallow to prevent choking. At the end of the esophagus, a muscular ring or valve called a sphincter allows food to enter the stomach and then squeezes shut to keep food or fluid from flowing back up into the esophagus. The stomach muscles churn and mix the food with digestive juices that have acids and enzymes, breaking it into much smaller, digestible pieces. An acidic environment is needed for the digestion that takes place in the stomach. By the time food is ready to leave the stomach, it has been processed into a thick liquid called chyme. A walnut-sized muscular valve at the outlet of the stomach called the pylorus keeps chyme in the stomach until it reaches the right consistency to pass into the small intestine. Chyme is then squirted down into the small intestine, where digestion of food continues so the body can absorb the nutrients into the bloodstream. Small intestine is made up of three parts. The duodenum, the jejunum, and, the ileum. Inner wall of the small intestine is covered with millions of microscopic, finger-like projections called villi. Villi are the vehicles through which nutrients can be absorbed into the blood. The blood then brings these nutrients to the rest of the body. From the small intestine, undigested food travels to the large intestine through a muscular ring or valve that prevents food from returning to the small intestine. By the time food reaches the large intestine, the work of absorbing nutrients is nearly finished. The large intestine's main job is to remove water from the undigested matter and form solid wasps to be excreted. The large intestine also has three parts. The cecum is the beginning of the large intestine. The appendix, a small, hollow, finger-like pouch, hangs at the end of the cecum. Doctors believe the appendix is left over from a previous time in human evolution. It no longer appears to be useful to the digestive process. The colon extends from the cecum up the right side of the abdomen, across the upper abdomen, and then down the left side of the abdomen, finally connecting to the rectum. The rectum is where feces are stored until they leave the digestive system through the anus as a bowel movement.